my my bad, people. I uh, I got some allergies that I'm dealing with here. You better be careful when watching this video. Your eyes might start to water. Not because of how beautiful you think the scenery might be, but because the pollen here is so bad that it might get into your eyes virtually right through the screen. That's right, people. The Ohio River Valley is one of the worst regions in the country for people with allergies. Anyways, this video isn't about allergies. It's about the city of Madison, Indiana. Madison is in the extreme southeastern part of the Hoosier State. It's about halfway between Louisville and Cincinnati along the Ohio River. Maybe a little bit closer to Louisville than it is to Cincinnati. Where I begin the video is in the state of Kentucky, Milton to be exact, which is Madison's neighbor across the Ohio River. Looks like it belongs on an episode of Ozark in places if you know what I mean. You could probably put up a riverboat casino here if you tried. I filmed this video back in October of 2020. That's right, I've been hiding this video from you guys for over a year. Nonetheless, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos with amazing insights on other places like what you'll see here can be found in my Indiana playlist, my USA Small Towns playlist, or in my Ohio River playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. Yeah, so this is Milton. Doesn't look all that great here. Really, it's a glimpse of rural Kentucky, which is sad that things are this way in not all parts, but some parts of the state. Milton was founded back in 1789, when this land still belonged to Virginia, actually. Milton was never a big city or anything like that. It's always been pretty much what you see here. Ohio River floods have devastated this town several times over the years. Unlike the Indiana side of the river, the Kentucky side doesn't have much room to build a city before the hill, as you can see here. Today, there's about 600 people that call Milton home. Too small to have any kind of accurate economic data, so I'll use the data for Trimble County, which that data doesn't reflect what we see here. The reason why that is is because the land value down by the river is drastically lower than what it is above the hill, since the flood risk here is so bad. Anyway, Trimble County is home to about 8,800 people. The median household income is $53,000 per year, which isn't that bad for a rural county. That's about average. The percentage of adults 25 and older with a bachelor's degree or higher is only 14%. People around here should look into that scholarship that's offered to you when you're the first person in your family that goes to college. Probably a lot of high school seniors here whom that would apply to. Anyway, the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $124,000, and the poverty rate is only 12%. I guess that if you're happy living here and you have a job at the power plant west of town, then that's all you need in life. Crack open an ice cold Mountain Dew, spell corner with a K and not be judged, smoke him cigarettes, watch him barges go down the river. Heck yeah, man. That's the good life. There's really not too many streets to Milton. Apparently, floods destroyed a lot of the original buildings that were here when the community was built, so there's not really that many historic buildings or anything like what you'll see in Madison. Over here, there's just some more trailers and not much else. Just like with the bigger cities, you know that you're in the hood when you see the liquor lotto stores. Well, you know that you're out in the sticks in Kentucky when you see a tobacco and candy outlet. The tobacco culture in Kentucky is so strong that it's often ranked as the state with the highest percentage of adult smokers, usually trades between West Virginia and Kentucky. Currently, the rate is 24% in Kentucky, which is better than it was 10 years ago when it was 28%. Indiana isn't much better as it often finds itself in the top 10 list as well. About 19% of adults in Indiana smoke today, which is better than the 24% from 10 years ago. It all goes back to how the economy has operated in Kentucky for a long time. Used to be that you felt like you had to buy cigarettes to support the local economy with all of the tobacco farms in the state. Then if you're a kid and you grow up in a household full of cigarette smokers, then you're likely to smoke yourself. Well anyway, that's enough about Kentucky as now we're in Madison, Indiana. 
This bridge was recently reconstructed. Before that, it was actually quite scary for a lot of people to drive across as the lanes were incredibly narrow, which is actually pretty common to see in the Ohio River Valley, a narrow two-lane truss bridge. The recent work has widened the bridge, which was much needed. There is even a pedestrian walkway that's been added to the bridge, which is nice. It's one of only two vehicle crossings over the Ohio River between the Louisville and Cincinnati metro areas. Originally, it opened in 1929, and today, the Madison-Milton Bridge sees about 10,000 vehicles a day. Madison, despite being in the Hoosier State and having only one high school basketball championship to its name, which was back in 1950, actually has some of the richest history for a town within the entire state. I mean, I know it's hard for you Hoosier folks to look past how successful or unsuccessful the local high school basketball program has been, or how big the high school gym might be, but if you're able to look past that, the history of this town is truly quite impressive. Madison was founded back in 1809, and at one point it was actually the third largest city in the state. It was home to the first railroad in the state, and it had a bustling steamboat port too. The geography of the place though gave Madison its limitations, even though the first railroad was built here. It was tough for trains to get up and down the hill. Newer railroads ended up being built directly between Indianapolis, Louisville, and Cincinnati, and the economic development of Madison came to a halt. The town's glory days though left us with the largest national historic landmark district in the country, and most of the buildings in town are original and have been well maintained, at least when compared to some of the other historic districts that we might see in this country. You'll see that as we drive along Main Street and you'll be able to judge for yourself. To the left you saw the Jefferson County Courthouse which was built in 1859. A fire broke out in 2009 and almost destroyed the building, but it was able to be saved. As we go along you'll see that many of the historic buildings are full of occupied shops and restaurants. If you're a subscriber of my channel, you know that most of my uploads have side shots of the areas that I drive through, but since I filmed this back when I didn't have the luxury of several cameras, the most I can do is slow it down and zoom in on the sides, but yeah. Anyway, this town pretty much looks the same as it did back in 1850 with the preservation of all the original buildings. Here you can see the historic Ohio Theater, which opened in 1938. There's currently a fundraiser to help renovate and repair the building from fire damage. Another key role of Madison's history is that it was an important location for the Underground Railroad, as Kentucky to the south was a slave state. There were many buildings within town that were used to hide the slaves as they tried to head north and find a better quality of life. Otherwise, all these houses and buildings that you see were built here during the 19th century. Once again, it's all a part of the largest national historic landmark district in the country. Yeah, and all of Main Street is full of shops, restaurants, maybe some bars here and there, some gimmicky little touristy kind of areas, some antique shops. All of the storefronts seem to be full. There's hardly an abandoned storefront, not really an abandoned house. It's a really nice town. Really nice place to just get out and walk along the sidewalks on the street, really. And it looks like we just passed a building with some fire damage here on the left. So yeah, it's kind of crazy to think about how Madison was supposed to be this large city nowadays. Um, I mean, at least it was on pace to be that back in the 1850s. But the competition economically from nearby Louisville, Indianapolis, and Cincinnati all kind of overtook Madison's hope for being a large city in the future. And again, another reason as to why the economy didn't really boom here is because the train had a hard time going up the steep incline on the tracks that were built. And as you'll see here, it's a pretty steep hill to get to the 
hilltop, there's two parts of Madison. There's the Old Town Madison down by the Ohio River, and then there's the hilltop Madison, which is where we're heading now. Well, there's three different roads that go between Old Town Madison and Hilltop Madison. This is one of them. And you can see it's a very windy, twisty road because it's a pretty steep hill. This spot up here to the right is actually a waterfall. There wasn't one when I came through, but after a strong rain shower comes through, you'll usually see a waterfall going over the cliff and landing in the square-shaped pool. Nearby, there's actually a place called Clifty Falls State Park, and I end up going there later in the video. And now we're in Hilltop Madison, which basically reflects most other small rural Indiana towns of this size, so there's not too much special about it, really. And for a town of only 12,000 or so people, Madison is a pretty spread out town, and I think you'll see that throughout this video. That's mostly because of the way that the geography is with the Ohio River and the steep hills that go down towards the river. Now, even though Madison was considered to be this huge city back in the early parts of the 19th century, the town was never really able to grow much. It actually was a shrinking town for a long time period as the census recorded a population decline all the way from 1870 to 1930. That's like an entire generation. Now, I'm assuming that during that time, people started to relocate from being down by the river to being up on the hilltop to get away from the flood risk of the Ohio River. We'll talk about the flooding that the Ohio River brings along with it later in the video. On the graph for Madison though, you can see that between 1950 and 1960 that there's a big jump in the population. And that's probably when the city of Madison annexed a good chunk of land on top of the hill. Anyway, you can see that Jefferson County as a whole has been gaining population very slowly over the years. And the most recent census count shows that more people live in the region than ever before, but not by much. So Madison definitely isn't a dying town, but it's not really a growing town either. Really quick, more history fun, as this is actually the historic Michigan Road, one of Indiana's first highways. It was built in the 1830s to connect Indianapolis to the Ohio River and Lake Michigan. It begins in downtown Madison and stretches all the way to Michigan City, Indiana, which is east of Gary. Now we're going to head back towards downtown Madison. We're going to head down the hill along Michigan Road, but it's time to get into some more economic stats. You can see here that the poverty rates for Madison are pretty high and that the median household income is pretty low. The numbers for Jefferson County as a whole make things look better and probably tell a more accurate story of where the region's economy is at. Anyway, there's plenty of jobs in town, but there aren't that many good paying jobs. Definitely not that many that require a college degree or anything. The top employers for Jefferson County in order are King's Daughters Hospital, auto parts manufacturer Arvin Sango, which has its headquarters in town, Madison State Hospital comes in third place, which is a psychiatric facility, in fourth place, it's Madison Precision Products, which is yet another auto parts supplier. And in fifth place, it's... Hold on. Let, let me make sure I'm reading this right. Walmart Supercenter? Man, oh man. That's how you know opportunities are lacking when Walmart's in the top five. But if you're all right with the average run-of-the-mill good old boy job, then I guess this is a good place. But that's why we see such a low median household income and a poverty rate that is pretty high. The truth of the matter is that most of the kids that end up getting college degrees move on to larger metropolitan areas where more opportunities present themselves. And as you can see, we're obviously back into the Old Town Madison. Thank you. 
When it comes to the crime rates, Madison sees both a violent and a property crime rate that is just lower than the average rates, so your chances of getting mugged in Madison is basically non-existent. That is, unless you try hitting on a dude's girl at the local pub. Then your chances of getting punched in the face would skyrocket, especially if it's one of these biker dudes that hang out around town. But that's just like it would be anywhere else. On the other hand, Niche.com ranks the public schools as a C, so those could be better. And speaking of biker dudes that would try to punch you in the face... Obviously, I had the right-of-way there, buddy, unless I read that wrong and you were honking at me for other reasons. I mean, I don't swing that way, but you do you. That's fine. I, I won't judge. You do you, man. All right. Well, um, yeah. All right. Well, I know that some of you Hoosier folks will be mad if I don't mention this, as to the left is the Brown Memorial Gymnasium, where Madison won its state championship back in 1950. The high school used to be down here by the river before relocating to the hilltop. The gym is still open today, and if you want, you can rent the gym for $50 per hour. You can also buy an annual walking pass for $35, six months for $20, or a dollar for a day. You know that you're in Indiana when the town residents want you to preserve the old high school basketball gym, and they'll spend money on annual walking passes. Locals would also get upset if I didn't mention this, as to the right is the Lanier Mansion. There's a lot of old historic houses in town that served a purpose for one thing or another in the 19th century, but this one is probably the most notable of them all. The Lanier Mansion was built in 1844 and was declared as a state memorial back in 1926. In 1994, it was designated as a National Historic Landmark. James Lanier was one of Madison's first pioneers, as he was the president of the Madison State Bank and was an investor in Indiana's first railroad. Today, the house is open to the public as a museum. All right, well, this street that follows the river is all in open green space. There's a nice brick sidewalk with benches to sit on and some street lamps to make the small town vibes as good as they can be. It's a good thing that the entire riverfront essentially is a park-like setting as the Ohio River is capable of bringing some nasty floods. Some of the biggest floods that the town has seen includes the Flood of 1883, the Flood of 1913, and the Flood of 1937, with the last one being the biggest of them all. Every other year or so, there will be a flooding event where this entire street will be covered in flood water. It happened recently in 2018 and in 2021. The flood that occurred in June of 2021 damaged 60 properties and officials had to remove 80 tons of debris. The bridge was closed for two weeks as well. And that's just something that the residents here will always have to deal with. Other things about Madison includes the Regatta, which is an annual festival that's held in July that features boat racing and live music. Just another reason to add to the 4th of July for the locals to celebrate things and get drunk. How dare you try and make all of us locals sound like trashy hilljacks that only want to get drunk and celebrate. There's a lot more to the Regatta than just that. I'm contacting YouTube and telling them that this video should be taken down because that was rude. Dude, this video is 19 minutes in and I made one joke about the locals in the area. Actually, I've made quite a few at this point, haven't I? Yeah, my bad people, but you know I'm not wrong. You know that most of you like to have more than a few drinks during the regatta, and there's nothing wrong with that, so don't get offended. 
Anyway, the regatta has been held here on a year-to-year, non-pandemic year basis since 1951, even though the first boat race was held here back in 1911, as it brings in over 50,000 people to Madison every 4th of July weekend. The event has been a big thing in town for a long time, and there's actually a movie that came out in 2005 called Madison that centers around hydroplane boat racing. There's a lot of people that only know of Madison, Indiana because of the boat race. Unfortunately though, floods happen every once in a while on the Ohio River as I've talked about throughout this entire video and when that happens during the 4th of July weekend, the boat race gets cancelled. The last time that happened was 2015. Before we leave this area, the old railroad incline is nearby to the west and it hasn't been used as an actual railroad since it closed in 1992. It was the steepest railroad incline in use for around 180 years at the time that it closed. Today the railroad tracks are still in place and it's used as a trail. At your own risk though apparently because nobody wants to be responsible for anybody's injuries I guess and I guess it's dangerous to walk on the trail? I guess there's a chance of falling rocks but you'll be fine. So we're really just going to go down one more street before heading back to the hilltop area and it's a really boring part of town. I mean, most people in Madison live on the hilltop area, but it's uh, it's not as interesting as Old Town Madison, of course. And then I'm going to head over to the town of Hanover, which is just west of Madison. So now we're heading north back to the hilltop. This route is the least windy path to get towards Hilltop Madison. It's a pretty nice drive, but once we're there, you'll be able to see all of its fame and glory through the countless fast food and retail chains. And to the right is your local Walmart Supercenter where you can get all of your six packs of Mountain Dew and all of your cheap flannel shirts. And apparently it's also one of the only places in town where you can probably find a job. Now another thing that's very concerning about these small towns in rural Indiana is that drug usage is a major problem. It's to a point where you just can't get away from it in the news anymore. An article was published in November of 2021 from WDRB in Louisville, which is the market's Fox affiliate, that mentions that there were four overdose deaths in Jefferson County within a two-month span up until that point. 
You might not think that four is a high number, but that doesn't show how many people in the area are using. All it does is suggest that there are many more people that are using throughout the community. Four overdose deaths for a county of only 33,000 is higher than you think, and it's probably safe to assume that those overdose deaths occurred in either Madison or the nearby town of Hanover. And I think we all agree that one is too high. For a long time, Indiana was considered as the worst state for meth labs, and this mostly occurred around 2010. You don't see many meth labs around the country anymore today like you did back then, because now it's just being imported from Mexico, and that makes it harder to see where it's being distributed. But back when meth labs were being found seemingly in all rural parts of the Midwest every day, Indiana was ranked as the worst state for meth usage. Depending on what source you find, some still have Indiana in a top 10 list for states that have the biggest problem with drug usage amongst its residents. It's sad, but it's the true reality that Madison faces and many other towns face, especially in southern Indiana and throughout all of rural Kentucky, which isn't that far away. Kentucky's one of the worst states right now for that problem. To the left here is Madison Consolidated High School, home of the Cubs. Among the most notable alumni is former Major League pitcher Brian Bullington, former actress from the 1930s Irene Dunn, and um, some somebody else. Who who am I forgetting? It's me. That's right, people. I used to live in this good old boy town only for one year, though. I attended Madison High School for my junior year of high school. Yep, that's right. I was there for even less than a year. It, it was a very short time. I actually only attended this school for the first part of my junior year, and then I went somewhere else. But, yep, these are the athletic fields, and next we're going to head over to Clifty Falls State Park. How exciting. You can see that I've sped the video up quite a bit. Madison is a really spread out town for a town of only 12,000 people. And then you add in Hanover, the nearby town to the west, and everything is pretty spread out here. And that's mostly because of the geography with the Ohio River creating a valley and there's steep cliffs going down to the river. So it just makes everything really spread out. And that's why this video is pretty long. And to the left here is the entrance to Clifty Falls State Park. There's a hotel within the park that overlooks the mighty Ohio River, even though you have the massive power plant right below the park. It's a nice park to go to if you're just wanting to go for a hike through some nature trails. Within the park, you have four different waterfalls that range from 60 to 83 feet. And next I'm going to head over to Hanover and I'm actually going to skip things ahead until we get there. And just like that, here we are. This is the scenic entrance to Hanover College, which is a small private college that was founded back in 1827. It's the oldest private college in all of Indiana and it's affiliated with the Presbyterian Church. There's an enrollment here of about 1,000 students and the mascot is the Panthers. The athletic teams compete at the Division III level, and among the most notable alumni is actor Woody Harrelson, the current governor of Indiana, Eric Holcomb, the 21st vice president, Thomas Andrews Hendricks, and the 48th vice president, Mike Pence.
And we have officially made it to the campus of Hanover College, so you now get to see all of its fame and glory. It's actually a really nice looking campus, a lot of scenery, not something that you can say for many places throughout Indiana. Excuse me, Indiana has many scenic places. You should know, you lived here. Yes, I did live in Indiana for a long time, and no, Indiana does not have that many scenic places. This place looks nice, but there's not too many other places. You should get out more, travel the world, see what else is out there. Heck, I could say that every state that surrounds Indiana has more scenery than Indiana. Maybe not Illinois, but every other state, yeah, probably. Anyway, let's not let that guy ruin this video. I'm trying to be nice. I am. And this is a really nice looking campus, especially around this time of the year in the fall. Oh hey, what a surprise. It looks like people are taking pictures of the scenic overlook of the three bends of the Ohio River. It's Hanover College's claim to fame. Well, now it's time to dip campus and head over towards the town of Hanover. When you come across towns that are as small as Hanover that have a private college, the college is basically the identity of the town. It's often the town's largest employer. You'll see that there's really not much else to Hanover outside of a makeshift downtown area and a junior-senior high school. Hanover is in very close proximity to Madison, and it's a very small town, so that's why I included it in a video with Madison. Anyway, Hanover College was actually in Madison at a point a long time ago, but Hanover today is home to 3,500 residents and the median household income is $46,000 per year. Good thing that the home values are low with that salary. Only 13% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and that sticks out to me because that shows you that Hanover grads don't stick around the Madison and Hanover area, as the county and Madison both have very low percentages of adults with bachelor's degrees along with Hanover. The poverty rate in Hanover isn't terrible, as it's at 13.7%, which is just above the national average rate. The crime rates here are below average, and Niche.com ranks the public schools as a C, so those could be better. Both Madison and Hanover have only a C ranking from Niche.com on the public schools, which is a pretty credible site. And to the left is Southwestern High School, home of the Rebels. Every year, Southwestern and Madison have a big basketball game that is attended by many of the locals, both Madison and Southwestern, no matter if it's at one gym or another. And it just gives people another rivalry to root for around here, I guess. I mean, this is Indiana. High school basketball is religion here. Come on now. It's the land full of helicopter parents and 40-year-old weirdos who care deeply about how their town's high school basketball team is doing, whether they're succeeding or failing. All right, that might have been a little bit of an exaggeration on the 40-year-olds, but not really. There's really not too much else to say about the place. There's not that much history to Hanover the town outside of Hanover College, other than a fact that in 1974, there was a tornado that came through and tore apart town, a part of the super outbreak of 1974. So that was a pretty destructive thing that happened here. Outside of that, not too much.
All right, well, we have reached the end of this video here, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. You can also find videos with amazing insights on other places like what you saw here through my Ohio River playlist, my Indiana playlist, or in my USA Small Towns playlist. Last but not least, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace.